Um, so this is based on a book, right? Yes. So how did you hear about that project and what made you want to adapt it for TV? Oh, thank you so much. Well, you it first. <laughs> we, uh, so BBC Worldwide Productions, we're based in LA. We had read the book, Jane Tranter, the other executive producer on the show, and myself, when we were in the UK. We had wanted to develop it for a long time, and the rights became available to us, and we approached Glenn Morgan. And he said, no. <laughs> No, and they gave me the book, and um, you know, I was saying, you know, you, you get a meeting and you go, here's it, they go, have you read it? Go, oh, no, uh, this one I, I read that night, I think, and I went back and I'm like, we're doing the novel. It wasn't a jumping off point, or here's a, this is a good start, and go, no, this book is great, and um, that's how we proceeded. Great, how did you know who you wanted to cast, and how did you get them involved in the project? Uh, I had wanted to work with John Sim again for a, a long time. We'd worked together on Life on Mars and, and Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, you guys were like the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and Jane Trans had worked with him on State of Play, and we we were just hungry for an opportunity to do that. And I I saw him in London. We talked about the book. He read the book. He it came at a time where we were really lucky. He was I would like to say he was available. He wasn't really available. He was half available. He was shooting the second season of The Village, so we needed to share him with their schedule. So he did a lot of transatlantic travel between the two shows but um, it was dream come true to have him back back in my life they're nodding again how was it adapting the book so is is the whole show is it like in sections or did you just kind of spin off from it and base it on that I, I, basically the our first four episodes is you know three quarters of the book mm. and then we found that we were we needed to move things up um, you know, the cast is so great that John and, and Millie, they bring other things to mind. Mm. And you go, well, you know, we should be maybe talking about this, or here's a more interesting or different point. And, um, you know, we, Michael Marshall Smith wrote the novel, and these guys had, had a relationship with him, and he came down, and uh, Kristen and my brother Darren and I were all wrote, so you could talk to him. What were you thinking here? What were you thinking here? Well, we're gonna go do this, and he's like, he was so supportive and, you know, and very helpful. Mm -hmm. would, so, for example, would the would you say the characters in Intruders follow closely the characters in the book, or are there any departures? I think I think you're quite faithful to the book. Uh, the only uh, the Richard James Frain's mm -hmm. character was an older man. Mm -hmm. He was very like, but James, uh, and that's what I was kind of. Head of my head, and then we fell in love with him. Yeah, in the no, audition. Can, they, what can we say? He came he in to audition, amazing. and while he's audition, you're like, everything's changing. <laughs> yeah, you go, oh, pretty big guy. Yeah. So. We shifted very quickly. <laughs> but everybody else is pretty, I think, pretty consistent with the book. Mm. When you guys were on set and filming, was there anything on the page that either didn't translate or was so different from what you would imagine? <laughs> um, but that's in any show. Yeah. You know, and then you go, oh, I can't wait to watch this. I can't wait to shoot this. And then you put it all together and you go, eh. Well, I didn't really, that's, well, I thought it was going to turn out different. And then other things you, you know. It's the strangest thing yeah. in my job, which I've, I've, I've done for about 15 years, is, is you, you work with the writer on the script and you fight and you fight and you fight to keep certain scenes in that are critical, that you know, you know story-wise they've got to be there. And then you see the edit and you realise it's taken on a life of its own and something that, I'd, you know, when I was on paper, you think you've got to, you die not to have that scene. And then you see the whole piece put together and it's like some kind of crazy alchemy that the filming, just something about it, whether it's the actors bringing a role to life or the way the directors realise, you know, a segue between scenes, you suddenly realise actually that information you thought you needed is already being covered. So I love, I love the process of, of working from a novel to a script to the edit because every, every part is different, isn't it? And what you think you're fighting for, it, it changes, it evolves each stage. Speaking of directors, were you going for a certain look and in that did you decide what you were looking for in a director? Yes, we wanted, we wanted intruders to feel very grounded 
I mean, we 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 wanted it to feel like a psychological thriller, quite paranormal, quite you know conspiratorial, and we wanted it to feel very much of the world. So it's we don't have many set builds, for example, you know, very 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 few, a couple of swing sets. We're out in loca- on locations in Vancouver. We're using real houses, real locations. And, and that was very important to us. We wanted it to feel quite grounded and recognisable. It's yeah, it does. I mean, I coming from the UK, we we mostly use locations over over set built on, on on the majority of time. But it does come with complications. Not least, it snowed on the first the first week we were there, and we were filming from February to June. And you need some consistency, and you know you're not filming all your scenes in that one week. And it was three feet of snow it was really unexpected. Yeah, we had a scene with Millie and James on the beach. Mm. He was on the beach. You're not even paying attention to the background <laughs> trees. Mm. We had to go back to get a couple shots. Yeah. A month later, it's like it it's, doesn't yeah. even. You're on the same exact spot, and it doesn't match because it's just you know all the leaves have come in and stuff, you know. But that didn't stop us. Oh yes. <laughs> did you guys have any say in who you picked for the cinematographer, or did the director do that, or you collaborated? Yeah, I had worked with um, this guy Phil Lindsay. Had um, I had worked on it. He did some. Uh, additional footage on a movie that I made and then we did this show for Cartoon Network of live action called Tower Prep and he was DP and I really thought this guy uh, deserves you know he was an undiscovered gem Mm -hmm. and he's really you know he's amazing and and in turn Mark Freeborn the product you know I've had cinematographers say like in secret you're only as good as what you get to shoot and so they always, cinematographers are always aligned with good production designers. And Mark Freeborn, who built Walt White's Super Lab, you know, in Breaking Bad. And um, Mark and I go back to mm. Millennium, and he worked in everything that Jim Wong and I did up in Vancouver. And he's just, he's extraordinary. And, you know, he had, you know, um, experience with working in a location and stuff. So, and then those guys all, you know, they all know each other and they've all worked on each, so they have a shorthand, you know, and um, I'm really, really very proud of the look uh, of the show. Can you talk about the sound a little bit too? Music so important. Um, is it Bear? McCreary, oh, it is Bear McCreary. Can you talk oh, a little bit about that? Amazing. What can we say? We're just going to applaud him. It was such, it's, it, we're, we're in the editing process at the moment. We are only halfway through the season. And it is such a joy and privilege to get his his first rough cuts of his movie. It was really great for me. The, really great, but you know they worked with him on Da Vinci's, da Vinci's Demons. Demons. But you know, of course, Walking Dead, and you in Galactica, and you're like, well, that guy's good. And when you start talking about composers, Amazing. I'm like, um, well, you work with that guy Bear, right? And they go, oh, he's busy. He's busy. so busy. But, but we'll give try. Him, give him a call, and we'll see. And um, you know, call him up and he's, he says, uh, you've worked extensively with Shirley Walker, who's passed away, but she was like such a, you know, the first female to do a, a score for a major uh, motion picture uh, feature. And he had such admiration for Shirley and, and so did, and it was like out of that that we uh, um, had this bond. And then we asked him, you know, he's, he often does a very large orchestral score and then we said we want this to be like you know clue and the conversation the very tense and minimal which is unlike him and very he really, discordant yeah and unsettling yeah he's just done oh it's amazing what a great For job people that are excited to see this show are there certain things that they that they can look forward to um, I think I think they have a great cast to look forward to with a great set of characters. I think you want to spend time with them. I think they're fascinating. I think the work the cast has done has been extraordinary. I think for me, it's that it's a combination of you know big picture, high concept ideas of if you could control multiple lives, what, is that right? Should you do that? What are the dangers? You know, there's a kind of big mythology in the background humming away but it's also in 
in the case of Jack Whelan and Amy, his wife, played by Mira, it's 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 how well do you ever know anyone? I, I love the domestic scenes. It's it's like you know you you're married to someone who's behaving oddly, just little things, different eating different food, listening to different music. How well do you ever know anyone? So I like the idea that we could be viewing on the sofa looking at our partner watching along with us thinking oh that's a bit strange mm. that's awesome very intriguing thank cool. you thank, thank you, you very much thank, thank you, you.